They think it's all over. It is now. Hello and welcome to a brand new series of They Think It's All Over. David and Gary have moved on, so please welcome our new team captains, Phil Tufnell and David Seaman. Thank God we've moved away from a cricketer who does nothing and a footballer who hangs around the goal mouth. <laughs> Weird, Phil and Jonathan is a cultured premiership footballer who can speak three languages and recently learnt the Russian for sod off to Southampton. <laughs> the show. Weird, David and Rory is a Kent and England batsman who as a teenager would fall asleep with Wisden's cricket annual wedged open at the batting averages. Although, to stop his parents worrying, he put it inside a copy of Razzle. <laughs> we start the show with a handbags question, all about the feuds that break out between sports people. David, Rory and Ed, it's a footballing spat for you. Here's Chelsea making the Champions League on the final day of last season to the obvious delight of chairman Ken Bates. While England manager Sven Joran Eriksson is cock a hoop as England stick a magnificent two past the butchers, bakers and computer programmers of Liechtenstein. But recently things have cooled between Ken and Sven, so why have two of football's highest paid pensioners, apart from David here, fallen <laughs> out? Can I just say before we answer this question, Nick, how honoured I am to have David Seaman well, as the new captain? I knew you would be. No, an Arsenal hero of mine. Fantastic. We're all very well educated, aren't we? Uh, but you've got, I've got a first, Cambridge, you've got a double first. You've got a two-one against Blackburn. <laughs> <laughs> and we're three Arsenal supporters. Ed, you're an Arsenal supporter, correct? Yep. I am well-known Arsenal, and of course we know from David's performance of Man City against Arsenal, which is... <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> Ken and Sven, come on, chaps. You played for him. You played for Spain. What's Sven yeah. like to play... What is he like? He's good. He's got, he's got something special, but um, he must have to have shagged them too. <laughs> <laughs> he really has retired now. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, talking Ken Bates, Graham, what is it like to be in, in the same dressing room as people like McAlealy and Moot? Oh, gosh, you wouldn't know, would you? <laughs> <laughs> The thing is, I left Chelsea because I couldn't understand the manager, and I joined a club, Southampton, where I can't understand the manager. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how many caps do you pick up for England? 36. And about, what about you? Well, I've got 75, and by the sounds of tonight, it's staying at 75. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was long before tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Sven is mates with Avram, um, what's he called? Uh, no, Avram, Abramovich. Avram, Abram, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. I think what he did was he, he sent his wife, you know, he's visiting London, he sent his wife down King Dose. Here's my credit card, go and buy yourself something. He goes, like, I want Chelsea Football Club. <laughs> That's something smaller. Now QPR made my ass look big. <laughs> <laughs> but Ken Bates bought Chelsea for just a pound, wasn't it? Something like that, yeah. It, was a pound. it would have been 75p, but they threw Graham in as well, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rory, what did you get a 1 1 in at Cambridge? A 1 1? One, 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 one. <laughs> It was called an 11. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you ask, Tuppence? Well, I don't know. I've never, I've never heard of a 1-1 one, one or a 2-1. I don't know what they're all about, mate. Haven't you? You went to school, didn't you? Occasionally. Yeah. Even John. <laughs> so, now, let's not pick on him, because, OK, you may be intellectually, you're the better team. Now, I know, Ed, you, you've got, what is it, 10 GCSEs? and Something like that. Three A-levels. Your first, you know, and I know your parents must be very proud, but think how, parent, how proud his parents were when he passed his first urine test. <laughs> Flying yeah. Absolutely. Come on, Kenneth Sven. <laughs> David told me earlier that he thought he read somewhere that it was about Ken Bates' um, assertion that Sven was undermining the role of England captain by handing it to too many people and thereby demean cheapening it. Almost exactly the words on the card. <laughs> 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 Oh, 
<laughs> yes, well, as you might have guessed, Ken Bates started it. He accused Sven of cheapening the England captain's armband after he tossed it to four different players during the game against Serbia. Sven is so worried about violence erupting at the Turkey game that he's asked the FA to prevent known troublemakers from travelling. So they're confiscating Sol Campbell's passport. <laughs> Phil, Jonathan and Graham, it's a sporting excuse for you. Have a look at this. Here's Arsenal's Thierry Henry doing what he does best, scoring against Manchester United, Watford and Chelsea. Now, when he celebrated his first league goal of this season against Everton last month, he was told off for inciting the opposition fans. Mind you, he had an excuse, of course. What was it, Phil's team? Before we get to that, Nick, I <laughs> feel that uh, I must also welcome our new captains to the show. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Philip Clive Roderick Tufnell, to give him his full name. That's that really is. your full name. That's his real name, isn't it? Yeah, true in this show. That was difficult for you to say, wasn't it? Yeah, it was it? almost impossible, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> But essentially, here's what's happened to the show, and you can see it's different. Uh, over the holidays, uh, they think the show over was bought by an eccentric Russian billionaire. <laughs> and he wanted the very best talent available, which is why we have Tuffers here. And I know he doesn't look like much, but his blood has a street value of £27 million. <laughs> uh, sure, but I think it is, you know, it is fantastic that we've got David Seaman for the show, no doubt about it. Because I know you had a lot of other offers, mainly from glue factories. So we're delighted. <laughs> Do you still get accused of homosexuality? Are you still uh, considered the gay footballer? Only by narrow-minded bastards like you, John. Not me. I, I, I welcome. Yeah. I'm here, Graham. Please. Graham, 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 I'm here to. I'm here to defend and protect Can you. Because I'm saying please? I don't understand why they would think you were gay. It was just because you were reading the guide. It's not like you used to play with like a a ponytail and a big handlebar moustache. <laughs> <laughs> we take the piss out of us. Listen, we've all, we've all played for England, oh, mate. We've all played for England, son. I'm not taking the piss out of you. Oh. That's the test afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting confused again. Oh, no. You're not in the jungle now. These are real celebrities. <laughs> Is it true you, you collect antiques? Yeah, I have done. Okay, and I should imagine in the footballing world that's not a common pursuit? No, it's not common at all, but um, there's a few players that do it, and uh, a couple of managers as well. Apparently Kevin Keegan has bought the odd antique or two over the summer. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry if I shouldn't criticise, but that joke, we could see that coming like a Brazilian football. <laughs> <laughs> I never saw it. Graham, what are you doing? you know that one, mate? Yeah, well, he was accused of uh, inciting the supporters, wasn't he, by taking his shirt off and yeah. celebrating in front of them, but his excuse his was, was... He said his family were up in the director, one of the director's box above where the away supporters are, and he gave him a little, wanted to give him a little wave and take his shirt off and show them... For a particular reason? No, you need yeah, it. Yeah, must have been a birthday He wanted to show them I'll yeah. give you the point was for his second birthday or something? <laughs> <laughs> Arsenal's official explanation was that Henri was waving to his wife who was in a box behind the Everton fans. According to a club spokesman, he was celebrating his goal, his birthday the day before, and his wife's the day before that. So apparently Thierry Henri was saying hello to his wife in the crowd. Who'd have thought his pet name for her would be, take that you ugly scouse bastard. <laughs> Mind you, they got their own back a few minutes later. va va voom was the sound of the Everton fans torching his car. <laughs> <laughs> and the scores at the end of that round are Phil's team with three points and David's team with three points. <laughs> we couldn't start a new series without looking back at what's happened this summer. And basically only one thing's happened. David Bloody Beckham. So let's celebrate this summer of Beckhamania in a special quiz and find out just how much you've learned. So fingers on the buzzers. Hey Nick. Yeah? This is exciting. Yeah. <laughs>
Well, here's the first question. Hold on. To shamelessly flog, what product did David Beckham travel to Malaysia, Vietnam, and Thailand? <laughs> yes. Castrol GTX, yeah. mate. Castrol <laughs> engine oil is the correct well, answer. Yeah. Okay. Castrol yeah. engine oil is the correct answer. Right, that gives you three more questions. Okay. Thank In his latest <laughs> advert for Pepsi Cola, what sort of clothing does Beckham wear? Thong. Skirt. Trousers. <laughs> Skirt is nearly there. I need to be. Right, Roman Gladiators. Sure. Roman Gladiators hat, is the correct thing, answer. Skirt. Well yeah. done. Next question. How did David and Victoria advertise the Tokyo Beauty Centre, home of the eyebrow shaping kit? By making love in the window. <laughs> <laughs> and someone came by and said, Stop it, he's screwing a stick insect. <laughs> it's illegal. It's illegal. <laughs> did they both have Brazilians? Did they both have Brazilians? <laughs> Not a bad idea. His nerves. <laughs> and then, and then in strip weights, stick them together like Velcro. Boom. <laughs> Can you not mention Brazilians in front of? Now they staged a pretend pillow fight. This is your last one. Renew Car, the second-hand car company, apparently paying between two and five million for David Beckham's services, use a witty and creative slogan. What is it? I'm David Beckham, and I love an old boiler. <laughs> I've got two old bangers, one at home and one from Renew Car Company. <laughs> Massive. <laughs> That's not a million miles away. I'm oh. large in it. <laughs> Shorter than that. David Beckham here. Hello. Uh, it is in fact, I love cars. Oh, That's a phrase. That's poetry. Oh. Right, poetry. fingers on the buzzers again. What is the name of Posh's new skin cream? Finish it, fingers. <laughs> It's, it's got an upmarket name, Plaster de Paris. <laughs> no? Polyfiller. That's a good one. Uh, Swafiga. <laughs> if you can get one of the words in the name of Victoria Beckham's pro product. Grim. Victoria. Victoria, oh, thank you. Victoria's style, okay. Chances to get points now, boys. Come on, okay, artist David Rayner created a picture of David Beckham using 3,000 what? Oh, 3,000... Footballs, that'd be mm. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, footballs. See, this is the problem when you advertise for a new team captain by putting an advert in the news agents next to the Whistlers. <laughs> <laughs> What's this? We <laughs> made a statue of him. No, a they made, made, created a picture buttons. of him using 3,000 chocolate buttons. No. Something Matchsticks. No. Smarties, was it? It was made using 3,000 communion wafers. There's a picture, you see? Good heavens. Last question. How many children, according to David, does David want? Um, well, it's going to be low figures. He can't go past ten, can he? So I'm <laughs> four. I'm going to give you four. His quote is actually four or five, but realistically, I'd like at least three or four. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice, though. That's You've got to love him, haven't you? OK, at the end of that round, David's team have five points and Phil's team have nine. Come on. <laughs> Now, our next new round is called the treble. The teams have to link three sports personalities with three objects. David's team, your subject for the treble is unfortunate comparisons. Here are your three sportsmen. Well-fed teen football sensation Wayne Rooney. Oh! US Open golf champion and full-time charisma vacuum, Jim Furyk. <laughs> And Welsh winger Ryan Count Me In, unless it's a friendly gig. <laughs> so, David's team, they've all been compared to something, but which one has been compared to a cocker spaniel? Who's been likened to an octopus? And who's been compared to a chess grandmaster? Gigs, he's got to be cocker spaniel. Because if you follow on that goal that he scored past me, did you see how hairy he was? He is hairy. It's <laughs> amazing, isn't it? He's very hairy. And he licked his balls as well in the studio. <laughs> 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 I'm very sure that girl, that Rooney girl, it was a fluke, wasn't it? Yeah. Don't you think? That I mean, was, that was coming for you. He was going for the other corner. He was, yeah. You'd know it was a fluke because you've seen a few of them in your career. <laughs> <laughs> Goalkeepers that I only remembered some mistakes, aren't they, David? Well, some are. <coughs> think of Mark Bosnich. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but at least he always stayed near his line, eh? <laughs> It's unfair that you're picking on David Seaman. 
the little I know of football, I know him to be one of the greatest goalkeepers this country's ever produced. And the fact that he's still playing in the early stages of Alzheimer's is a <laughs> great courage. And we should support him in that decision. I said we support you! Thank you. <laughs> Wayne Rooney and Chess couldn't go together. No, a scouser playing chess. Yeah, no, he couldn't say check, could he? It'd be gyro. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. I think I know the answer to this. Yep. I reckon Jim Furrick is the octopus. Right. I think Ryan Giggs was once described by Sir Alex Ferguson as uh, like a cocker spaniel running around a football pitch until I kicked him up the arse. Uh, and Wayne Rooney was, I think, probably described as a chess grandmaster by someone who I didn't know chess or hadn't seen Wayne Rooney, Rooney or was blind. Or was taking the fish. Or was taking the fish, yeah. You got three points out of three well, there. Well done. Well done. According to Professor Mark Williams of Liverpool John Moores University, Wayne Rooney has the intelligence of a chess grandmaster. He thinks several moves ahead using a skill known as perpetual chunking. American golfer Jim Furyk's unorthodox swing has been compared to an octopus falling out of a tree and a man beating a snake to death in a phone box. <laughs> and Alex Ferguson waxed lyrical when he first saw Ryan Giggs run and likened him to a cocker spaniel chasing a bit of silver paper around. On his way to winning the US Open on a sweltering hot day, Jim Furyk was distracted by a topless woman running across the green although a slow-motion replay revealed it was Colin Montgomery chasing after an ice cream van. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, Colin wanted a 99, but three-putted the last and finished with 101. <laughs> Ryan Giggs was on Manchester City's books as a youngster, but was released after a medical revealed he wasn't 39. <laughs> Girls well, team, your subject for the treble is sporting inspirations. Watch this. That's her suit, former King of Wimbledon, Pete Sampras. Rookie England cricket captain Michael Vaughan. And FA Cup nearly men, Sheffield United. Now, they've all been inspired by something, but Phil's team, which one was inspired by turnips, which one by a love letter, and which one was helped by watching Donny Osmond? <laughs> Michael Vaughan, he's the, uh, he's the cricket. He's the England cricket. Right, okay. Cricket. Lewis Ball. And he's new, the new one in charge because Nasha left, isn't he? Nasha left. <laughs> Nasha. Nasha. And how is Michael Vaughan doing? Is he, are we winning now? He's doing all right. Vaughan, yeah, no, he's going on well. Clever nickname. Vaughny. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now we've got the cat. So named, I believe, because once you fell asleep and some kids put a firework up your bum and stuff. <laughs> it was the original Atomic Kitten. <laughs> I've been caught having, having a piss in next door neighbour's flower beds a couple of times. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. He actually sledged me the first time I played against him. Tell us about the first time you bowled with him. Well, you know, the big night, you were playing against Cambridge, probably not the biggest game of your year for Middlesex. He had a big night, I could see, and... Every time you bowled a ball, and I used to call the non-strikers in, so I'd say no or yes, waiting, silly voice, and uh, you'd say, bloody hell, Ed, shut up! <laughs> shut up, somebody! And eventually, it just drove such distraction, you appealed to the umpire, who was rocking Roy Palmer. He said, rocking, just shut him up! <laughs> <laughs> I could understand what you're talking about, mate. <laughs> Come on. Did Donny Osman accidentally get married to all of Sheffield United in a weird Mormon ceremony? <laughs> Maybe all of Sheffield. <laughs> Which leaves you with? I think Turnit might be Michael Vaughan. Right. It might be something to do with Vaughan. Maybe because, you know, Donny had a little brother, little Jimmy Osman. Yeah. And I've heard that um, Mr. Vaughan likes to polish his little Jimmy, which is his nickname for the old chap, before you match. <laughs> you can never get it in your box before you go out the back. I've had that trouble and I'd have been You can demonstrate before. without actually. <laughs> I had a little Viagra before a cricket game, and then I was next into bat, and I couldn't get it, I couldn't keep it in my box. <laughs> what sort of logical thought pro process when you go through there? Oh, I'm going to go in a bat in a minute. Oh, I know. <laughs> I've got some Viagra in the locker. Surely that would... No, it seems sensible. <laughs> I, I thought it would help me play with a straight bat. <laughs> right, that come on. Sampras is definitely the love letter, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, right. love letter, Sampras. Michael in the chair, which leaves you with... Uh, Osman and Sheffield, and Sheffield yeah. but no reason. He's no reason. correct for oh. three points. Well done. <laughs>
Neil Warnock claimed a visit to a Donny Osmond concert had inspired him to lead his Sheffield United team to beat Leeds in the Cup. Michael Vaughan was apparently motivated by fear of being morphed into a turnip by the papers. If we had lost at Trent Bridge, I had visions of my head appearing on a turnip like Graham Taylor, which is a little harsh on Graham Taylor, obviously. <laughs> and Pete Sampras kept an inspirational letter from his wife down his sock during his last ever Wimbledon. Boris Becker's wife also makes him keep something down his sock, an electronic tag. <laughs> We have done a lot of monkey jokes about Pete Sampras, but let's never forget that in his illustrious career, Sampras won 14 major titles, including Wimbledon, the US Open, and of course, King of the Swingers. <laughs> That's why he had to retire, he said, I've reached oh, the top dear. and had to stop, and <laughs> what's bothering me? Since becoming England captain, Michael Vaughan has had a string of bad scores, still not as bad as Phil's worst score, an OXO cube from a bloke at King's Cross Station. <laughs> And at the end of that round, David's team have eight points and Phil's team have 12. Yes. Time now for the teams to grope around in the dark as we play Field the Sportsman. David and Rory are up first. Look, David. Thank you. Sure you'll be fine? Thank you. <laughs> okay, and can we have our first mystery guest, please? <laughs> and your time starts now. Oh, here we are. Right. It's not a bird. That's big arms. Or Colin Montgomery. That's the next thing you do... <laughs> now, you never used to have the tackle, did you, David? No, but, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I reckon... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's Hello. The... Oh, my God. What have you got? Oh, yeah. I wish. Oh. What is it? <laughs> You're old enough. It feels like the World <laughs> Cup. <laughs> you better enjoy that moment. Oh. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's the bloke who stole the World Cup. <laughs> Are we talking about? Are we talking about someone who helped us win the 1936 Swiss World Cup? Mm. Is it the Russian linesman? <laughs> hey, hang on, little fella. Is it, is it Borley? No, no, no. I think you've got your title. What? You're talking Nobby? I think. We start correct. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> Turn now, please. Would you like to state your positions? All right, Bill. You have a similar amount of time to discover who's between you. I got oh, excited sure. when Nobby Styles came out because, first of all, I thought it was the old bloke from Georgia Mildred. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, folds on, please. Huh? Before we start, you could pass these along. <clears throat> Sometimes they have like baths and things. Don't go near and they'll pull you in. Really? That, you know, but they won't have one tonight because I'm wearing a nice suit and stuff. Our second mystery guest, please. <laughs> And your time starts now. Roscoe, where are they? Oh, my good God. <laughs> yeah, there's three of them. What's that? Is it? Oh, it's a lot. Is it Charlie's What the hell is that? <laughs> is there a gun? This one's got a gun. I've got a gun. I've got a gun there. <laughs> What's that? I know what that is. They'd be floating. Ah! 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 Hello, my boys. Here you are, mate. I'm here. Oh, I'm here for you. Uh, <laughs> Not the suit. It's a Vivian Westwood suit. They call him champions of the world. Uh, I'm not going to sit down for a week now. I'll give you the Yank ah. Union, the Paintball Association Cup champions. I'll give you that one. Well, I'll get one too. <laughs> Did that really hurt, Phil? Phil! 
Yeah. And you are. Yeah, I'm all right. Must have art. Has, has anyone got a rubber ring? <laughs> So the scores at the end of that round are David's team with 11 points and Phil's team with 15. <laughs> we finish the show with the name game. The team in front goes first, which means that Jonathan's going to be doing the clues. Pass Come on, bring it on. Jonathan, please. Come on, okay, as many names as you can in the next minute and a half, starting now. Hello, I'm a Russian. I'm a millionaire. Brandon 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 Brandon. Yes, yeah. thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right, Jesus now, I used to be the best player in the Northern Ireland, but now he's turned yellow and I like a drink very no. much. This bloke has a silly name, rather like Mr. Beadle, with the funny hand, who does a you've been fined? Jeremy. But he spells it wrong. Jeremy. Jeremy. Yeah. <laughs> this bloke, this fella, does not fix sporting events for cash. <laughs> He's more like an undercover policeman who just goes and helps investigate. <laughs> He's like a kind of athletic Miss Marple. <laughs> He's like Columbo yeah, with two good on. eyes, yeah, and... Get on with it. He's not, he's not a good. Come, come on. on. John Fashion. <laughs> All right, this one, first name, like a very common person on Big Brother. All right, how you doing? Second name, uh, same as a weaker. Johnson. Johnson. Yeah, first name, like the one from Big Brother. No, no, why? I'm pregnant. No, 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 no. I don't know, no, no. You like a melted candle, you know that one. Uh, it's like a precious jewel. It's a precious jewel. It's a gem. It's a gem. Ruby. Stone. It's a green gemstone. Emily. No, so, yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right, now, if a one legged model. Yeah, and now David, the thin white goose, he would be Heather Murray. So, 11 will win it for you. Okay, you ready? Time starts. Please declare. Now. <laughs> oh, he should be at his age nicking hubcaps in the streets of Liverpool. <laughs> Wayne Rooney. Rain, Rain Rooney. Rooney. It's close <laughs> enough, yeah. Let's call that foot go against you, David. Yeah, again. It's a cricketer. I mean, he actually played cricket for the town of Bedrock. Hey ho, meet the. Flintstone. Not Flintstone. <laughs> Andrew Flintstone. <laughs> Andrew. <laughs> There's like having Gary back. <laughs> Now, you're, you're a carp fisherman, aren't you? I am. I read that somewhere. And you're a carp cricketer. I read that somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think that's what it said, anyway. And this guy is the current British carp record holder. David. Jackson. Yeah, what's his first name? Think of Lee Dixon. Oh, shit. I didn't know. <laughs> Bring out that. I yes. didn't believe you. <laughs> um, on the 14th of um, February, you send... Uh, what a sort of... A Valentine. Yeah, but in Italian, what sort of... Valentino. Valentino, very good. And uh, uh, Italian for red, but plural. <laughs> <laughs> Paolo was one, a great, uh, great Italian footballer. Rossi. Very, hey, you see, very good indeed. Uh, the greatest manager the world has ever known in the game of awesome football. Arsene Wenger. Very good. You're a bit slow there, there David. <laughs> <laughs> So, David's team has 16 points, but this week's winner is Phil's team of 21! <laughs> so, thanks to Phil, Jonathan and Graham, David, Rory and Ed, my name's Nick Hancock, they think it's all over, it is now. Over on BBC Three now, another chance to catch tonight's EastEnders, followed by drama in Burnet. Follow over on BBC Two comedy with Alan Partridge.